Welcome back to our Law of Attraction series, episode three. In today's episode, we're gonna be talking about living from abundance and what that is, what that looks like, but most importantly, we're gonna talk about the three main lies or thoughts that we all at one point or another believe in which block us from realizing our full potential and being able to manifest our desires. And uh, all three of these lies are forms of victimization. Uh, But it's important that we have uh, structured the lessons the way we have so far because even if you know all of the right concepts and tips and tricks about how the law of attraction works, you will never be able to apply them and use them if you don't transcend or overcome these three common lies, which are a product of our social conditioning, our our consensus reality. And they are literally shaped by our society, uh, unconsciously of course, to keep us from realizing our full potential and manifesting what we wanna see in our lives. And so there's a quote from Marianne Williamson which goes along great with this um, idea. And the quote says that, uh, our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate or not good enough, but our deepest fear is actually that we might be powerful beyond measure. And I think we can all resonate with that because we're all very familiar with our darkness, right? We all know our darkness very well. But what we don't know very well is what we might actually be capable of. We don't know the power that actually resides within us. And so you might say, well, how do I know if I'm a victim then, Aaron, if I'm one of these people who believe these lies? Well, it's quite simple. If you don't know that you're powerful beyond measure, that you are mind-blowing, that you are amazing, you are incredible, you are capable of anything, then you are a victim. It's that simple. It's actually more accurate to say you have victimized yourself because nobody can victimize you unless you allow them to because victimization is a mindset. So we're going to talk about how we do that and why we do that. So the first form of victimization is the belief that you are a victim of circumstances. The, the idea that uh, life always pushes me around, uh, I can never get a break, I can never get ahead, life's been so cruel to me. Uh, we all know people who complain like this and nobody wants to be around them because it's absolutely exhausting and we don't buy what they're selling. And so you start to realize that uh, these people literally love being victims. And it, it's really gross. It feels very gross to be around somebody like that. But we all do that in subtle ways still. It might not be as bad as this person, but we're still doing it, and that should matter. And so the reality is that life is on your side, right? The universe is on your side because you are the universe, right? You are life. And so when you understand that, you stop seeing life as your enemy. Because being a victim of circumstance is basically saying, I don't trust life. I don't trust the universe that it has good intentions for me. And so that is, of course, going to block love energy. And this type of victimization mindset is nothing more than an escape tactic of the ego. It's sort of the way that the ego weasels its way out of having to take full responsibility for its life, having to take full ownership of the fact that, hey, this reality that I hate so much is my fault. I've generated it, I've created this reality. And uh, that's the beginning of freedom, but the mind doesn't wanna take responsibility for anything. So it sort of slips out the back door, right, by playing the victim card. Oh, me? No, I'm just a poor victim. I'm just gonna go now, right? So the mind is very crafty. And as crafty as the mind is, you must be equally wise. And so after this video is over, you're going to be able to circumvent all of the ways that your mind tries to keep you in the cycle of victimization. But the truth is that your circumstances have never dictated anything to you, okay? You decide what your circumstances dictate to you. The first thing to understand about victimization is that uh, if you are a victim, it's because you want to be a victim at some level. And when I say you want to be a victim, what I really mean is that your mind wants to be a victim and you are identified with your mind. So whatever it's saying and doing, you are following suit. But the truth is that nobody really wants to be a victim. We all want to be victors. And so if you stop buying what the mind is selling, then you're not a victim anymore because the only form of victimization is self-victimization. Nobody can make you their victim if you don't want them to because Victimization is a mindset. 
The second way that we victimize ourselves is something that I call the poverty mentality or lack mentality. And this is essentially just the belief that the universe might not provide for me or there might not be enough resources going around. Uh, I could be my most authentic, powerful self if I just had the resources, but I don't, so I can't. Um, now this is basically a game the ego plays because the ego is only capable of seeing lack because by very definition, the ego is the entity that believes itself to be separate, to be an individual entity apart from the whole. And because it separates itself out from the universe and says, okay, now here I am over here, there's the universe out there. It now feels as, as if it doesn't have access to the infinite resources available in the universe. So it only sees what it's missing. It's the, the grass is always greener on the other side, or I'll be happy if I get X, Y, Z thing, then I'll truly be happy. Um, it only sees in lack. And so this actually makes it a very easy way to recognize when a thought is coming from ego, because you can just ask it one question, which is, is this thought rooted or based in a sense of lack in any way? And if it is, you know it's from the ego, because your true self only speaks from abundance, because your true self is the whole universe, and there are infinite resources available in the universe. And there's actually only one thing that can't exist in an infinite universe, and that's lack because the universe has everything. So it's just pretty nonsensical to say that the infinite universe doesn't have enough resources for me. They're out there, you just have to go get them. So if I hand a water bottle to my friend and say, here, you can have my water bottle. Well, am I now lacking a water bottle? In one sense, if you wanted to say I was, sure, I guess, but I can just go down to the store and get another one. So I was never truly lacking a water bottle. I just had to do something to go get it, right? And that's exactly how the law of attraction works. Everything is available to you. Um, you just have to believe that the universe wants to give it to you. And so if you know that, and you can look at your own life experience and see that, the universe has always provided what I need. It doesn't always give me what I want right away, but it has always met my needs. Then you can take one step further and say, okay, I know that that's true. So maybe it will also give me what I want if I want it and pursue it bad enough. And this is what Jesus touched on when he talked about uh, not worrying about your life in the Sermon on the Mount. He said, consider the lilies of the field, right? They don't toil or strain, but yet their uh, God clothes them with more beauty than king's robes. And consider the birds, right? It, they don't uh, stress about where their next meal is coming from, but yet God feeds them. So if God feeds even the birds, how much more valuable are you than a bird to God? And so what he was touching on is that worry just pretends to be necessary, but worrying doesn't accomplish anything. In fact, it only accomplishes negative. It only drains you of more energy and adds more variables into the already difficult problem you're facing. So you have to do things in your life, but you don't have to worry about things in your life because you aren't lacking anything. If you need it, it will be provided. And you have to fundamentally know that um, in order to really live up to your true potential. And when you do, you start to become very powerful. The third way that we commonly victimize ourselves is through the belief in unworthiness. The idea that you might not be good enough to earn your desires, to manifest your passions into reality. You might not be worthy of that, right? And so this is just a subtle form of pride because the truth is that there is only God, right? Everything comes from and returns to God. So when you say, when the ego says, I'm not worthy, it is separating itself out and saying, I'm not worthy of all that there is. <laughs> so this is something that I saw a lot um, growing up in church. And I'm sure most of you who have grown up in church can resonate with this. This, this culture of unworthiness, of lack mentality, uh, just permeates the culture. They have worship songs about it. Of I'm a worm, I'm a wretch, I'm not worthy of your love, but thank God you love me anyway. And uh, they say this as though it were virtuous, as though it was spiritual to beat yourself up and say that you aren't worthy of God. Um, of course you aren't worthy. Of course you can't earn worthiness. You can only be worthy, right? It, you can't attain infinity. You cannot in attain divinity. And so to say that you are unworthy is claiming that, one, you are separate from God, which is pride, but two, 
is that it's somehow possible to do it of your own merit, right? Which is, of course, arrogant. So it's arrogance masquerading as humility because the ego does not care what identity that you give it. It will take I am the best and it will take I am the worst. It just wants an identity to latch onto so it can feed off your energy and stay alive in your mind. So a really uh, seductive way of doing that is through negative thinking because it pretends to be humble, right? Oh, I'm so terrible. I'm so awful. I'm such a sinner. Um, but this is just arrogance. And so when you realize that, you are you are not worthy because you've done anything to earn it, but because you are a child of God. You are a child of the universe. And what parent would say that their child isn't worthy of their love? So now that we have overcome these three common fallacies, we can start to really feel and experience the power and the potential that exists with inside of us. And this is when we start to live from abundance. Living from abundance essentially just means to see only what you desire to see, to see only what you prefer. And Jesus again talked about this when he said that if your eye is single, then your whole body is full of light. But if your eye is negative, then your whole body will be full of darkness. And so what he's saying there is, See only the good. See only what resonates. Because every time that you give your attention, your significance to the negative, you are actually attracting it to yourself. And the reason for this is because the universe speaks the language of energy, which is what we talked about in the first lesson. The universe doesn't care what you say. It's listening to your vibrational state. It knows what you really want. And when you're giving all this importance and identity to negative circumstances, it's your way of saying to the universe, I want more of this experience. And so it's going to keep attracting more of that to you. So that's why it is crucial to live from the place of nothing ever happens to me, except the things I want to experience. Then I allow those things, my significance, my importance, my attention. And the analogy I like to give for this is to imagine if you are walking down the street and you see a man driving a car and run over a woman on a bike, right? So the police show up and they ask you, sir, can you please explain what happened as the, as the witness to this? And you say, yeah, sure. Um, I was walking down the street and I saw this guy run a stop sign and he crashed into the lady on the bike. Okay, then what happened? Well, then I went over to the lady to see if she was okay. Then what happened? And then I went over to the man in the car and I pulled him out of the car and started socking him in the face. <laughs> so the cop is going to say to you, uh, can we get somebody else here that's a real witness? Because this guy is a part of the crime scene. So don't be a part of the crime scene. Be the witness. Just be the bystander. Um, getting involved means something as simple as complaining about the situation. When you're complaining about it, you're already identifying with it. You're already giving it significance. You're essentially saying that this circumstance uh, defines me in some way which is, as we talked about in the previous lesson, taking your feelings based on your circumstances. And that's a way to go downwards in the negative resonance, negative resonance pathways. So we want to keep our vibrational state high. We can't afford to allow anything to suck our energy from us because that drops our vibrational frequency. And that is key, like we talked about, to attract what we want. We have to get it through love energy. We have to radiate it like a magnet. And so we need to get more excited about it. And so... What you need to understand is that life will not allow you to be excited about an idea that isn't possible if you're excited about it. And in fact, the more excited you are about it, the more ecstatic the thought makes you, the dream makes you, the more possible it is because consciousness wants to experience through you. It wants to look through you as a unique lens to experience a unique expression. And so if you're excited about something, that's consciousness's way of saying, this is so possible. This is so close to you being able to manifest it and experience it. And that's going to be good. That's going to lead you to experiences and memories and feelings and things that you want to have. So just keep following what resonates with you. Just keep seeing only what you desire. And this doesn't just mean, you know, if you're a person in business, it doesn't just mean don't do business with people that don't resonate with you. Yes, that's what I'm talking about, but I'm talking about even simpler than that. Don't get involved in that argument. Don't say that negative comment. Don't contribute to that gossip, whatever it is. The smallest things count too, because those are all negative resonances that you, are, you will attract more of to yourself if you get involved with them. So I want you to put this into practice. I want you to try for one day just to live from the state 
of nothing ever happens. Live from the state of not giving your energy to anything, unless it's something that does resonate with you. Because that will make you your most abundant self, your most authentic, joyful, ecstatic, expansive self. And when you live from abundance, that is the ultimate state of selflessness. Living from lack mentality, poverty mentality, is selfish. You're taking the easy way out. You're saying, I'm, it's too scary to take risks and pursue my passion, to pursue what makes me happy. And I don't trust the universe anyway, so I'm just going to do what's easy. I'm going to just play video games every day and drink every weekend and not do the things that I really want to be doing. That's selfish. You're making the world a worse place. You're making yourself somebody that we all have to help out because you're so depressed and you're so sad. And we care about you, so we're going to do that. So you're sucking energy from everybody. That's what selfishness is. So be selfless. Do what makes you happy. So that's all we're going to talk about for this video, but I really hope that that made sense to you guys because once you know that you are worthy to have your heart's desire, you do have enough resources, and you are not a victim of your circumstances, then you start to become really, really powerful. And you can live with this real visceral sense that everything is possible and I can achieve anything I set my heart out to do. And that's when you're living from abundance. So next week we're going to be talking about how you can take what we've learned so far and apply some methods and techniques to really supercharge your reality and become that kind of a magnet to pull in the things that you want and even things you don't know you want yet to attract everything good to yourself. So thank you guys for watching and we'll see you in the next video.